As promised, my Piccadilly book collection. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to My Tick at the Lake. My little Piccadilly book collection is growing. Piccadilly is who makes these beautiful books. I get them at our local Meyer store. I saw recently that Walmart is now starting to carry them. Some of them are available on Amazon. These are fast becoming favorite projects, favorite toys to play with. Of course, I love, I just love them because they're books. They're so beautiful. They are just so gorgeous. I got this one and this one because I love the colors, because I love, I just think they're so fabulous. I'll go through the titles and I'll show you how I'm working in mine and give you some suggestions on how you might use these for your junk journaling pleasure or on your creative path or to build creative muscles. There's all kinds of ways to use these books. This one is called A Thousand Things You Don't Know About Me. And I've had these books. This one is a couple years old. This one's brand new. This one's brand new. These two beautiful colored ones. This one I've had for a long time. This one I got last year for my birthday a year ago. This one I have had for a while as well, and I'm only just now starting to use them, which is strange, but a thousand things you don't know about me. Look how pretty. I mean, that alone is worth the $10 or so. And then each page has loads of prompts or questions. Uh, we'll just go through a couple. My favorite way to spend a rainy day is the thing I love most about my life, the very first game I ever played, the scariest moment I had in school. I like to keep fit by one place I think is haunted. So there's all these just random questions about you. A lot of them are kind of like, oh, what is your secret pleasure? You know, what do you really enjoy doing but not very many people know about because you'd be embarrassed to know that you read cheesy romance novels every single day of your life or something like that. I don't know. Some of them are just pr pretty benign. Some are pretty deep. Great book. I have done a few of these. I just pick by, I just randomly open to a page and I haven't been dating these answers, which I should have done because things change over time. Some things anyway, but you see, I have a few of these things done, uh, but I've, I've put this one on the back burner for a little while. I love this. My mom got this for me for my birthday. My opinions on everything. Again, I love the cover and they just feel so nice. They're a perfect, easy to handle size journal. Just lovely. I, by the way, I'm not in the studio today, so if things sound weird or look weird, it's because I'm at the kitchen table where my desk is. I have a beautiful new mug. Today is Sunday, and I'm enjoying a cup or three of coffee, complete with freshly frothed real cream. Yum fest. Back to the books. This is funny and fun, but they're they're actually pretty difficult questions to answer sometimes because they're deep and they only give you this much. But of course, with any of these books, you can take a dollar composition book and answer it at length, number them, or you know, make yourself some sort of way to know or just use the question, you know, this particular one can artificial artificial intelligence develop a greater level of creativity than humans. Hmm, look at the cute little pupper. So cute. And they all have little tiny different clip art. Why is it in, so important in some societies that we do not offend others? Ugh, whatever. Some of them get you going, some of them get you thinking, some of them are no-brainers. Um, but back to the comp book, you can easily just write out the question and then date and write your answer in however long you want it to go. I haven't been doing this one very much. I did do a couple, you know, one or two, I think, when I first got it. Uh, but like I said, they're very thought provoking. For me, they're sort of rant inducing, but of course we know that most things are rant inducing, thus the Krabby Crafter moniker, right? So I haven't been working on this one. This one I bought on 
just a whim. I, again, I loved the cover and I thought you have three or four of these books at home and you're not working in them. Do you need another one? Yes. Yes, I do. I need this one. And again, inside the book, I mean, how can you not love it? It's in the back too. It's on the back. This one is A Journey Within is a thought-provoking introspective activity journal designed to help you get your, to know yourself better each time you turn the page. We use inspiring quotes from influential people throughout history to fuel each question. It is so fun. I've been working in this every day. I started June 1st. I did skip around. I did some of these when I first got the book in May, May 26th. I did the first page. 29, 30. Maybe I started this one right away. I don't know. I guess I did. Anyway, now I'm starting at the front and working my way through because what happens when you just pick randomly or you pick one that you like to do, what ends up happening is at the end of the project, all you have are the crappy ones that you didn't want to do in the beginning. So for me now, I start at the beginning of these projects and I'm going every single day. I've missed one or two days, whatever, it's fine. And there's no rules. Do how you feel like doing. I have watercolored some, I have marker, color markered some pages, some answers. It says, draw, draw a picture of what your imagination looks like below. And it just, you know, it, it went bigger because that's how my mind works. It's all over the place. It, it doesn't just fit this little rectangle. I am having a blast filling these out every day. It's what I do first thing in the morning rather than journaling. I'd like to do more journaling than I have been, but there's only so much time in the day. I could sit and do this kind of stuff all day and that's not terribly productive, so, so I don't. One of the reasons I quite enjoy doing this in the morning is because even if my days get hijacked, and quite often they do, meaning somebody or something steps into my day and jacks it all up, hijacks my plans, and I allow it quite often, hijacks my plans, but having done this, at least a half hour of my morning, a half hour of my day in the morning was all mine, 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 mine. So that takes the blunt off that sharp feeling of anger from me allowing my day to be hijacked. And again, there are no rules here. You can do whatever you want, answer however you want. And there's all these great quotes. There are quotes from Cookie Monster, Alan Watts, Oscar Wilde. To live is the rarest thing in the world. Most people exist, and that is all. True, sad but true. Doris Day, so there's writers, political figures, Poets, actors, unknowns, Cookie Monster, Napoleon Hill, Amy Tan, Harry S. Truman, Jim Rohn, all fabulous. And questions are just quite varied. In what ways has life surprised you and who in your life has given you the best surprise? So obviously this is two questions in one. I would number them. I just put a little one and a little two, and then I put a one there, answer the question, and then wherever I start number two, I number it. You know, nobody's gonna read this but me, but I might not remember what the hell I was doing or thinking when I, when I go back and look at these things. For me, as a writer, it's a really good exercise to try to keep my answer within this small area. I could fill up pages and pages and pages on every, one, because that's what I do. I write. I write a lot. And when when my mind gets going, my writing just, just takes off too. It might be just the opposite for you. You might look at all of this and go, oh my God, how would I ever fill this in? Well, again, it's a good exercise for you to think deeper, think broader, go further than just your knee-jerk reaction. What ways of life surprised you? I mean, that's a pretty deep question, but there are some that are that are not as deep. Let's see if I can find a simple one. Here's here's one. Below 
draw several stars and write your most important goals and dreams in those stars so you can visualize reaching for them. For some people, they have one goal or they have three goals. I could fill this page with stars, with goals and dreams that I have. So whether you're intimidated by the empty space or whether you're thinking, wow, that's a tiny space to, to try to put all my ideas in, Either way, it's a really good exercise. And if you simply can't stay within the constraints, again, get a composition book and write the rest of the story. Write your question down and then answer it. And these are all for you, again, to get to know yourself better. They're not for public, you know, you're not writing a, a high school essay paper. You're not writing a, a composition paper for college courses. This is just fun. It's a way to explore what's in your mind. And part of the reason I want to do Positively Creative You eventually is most people don't ever give their mind and their thoughts any thought at all. They, they don't give how they think any thought. They don't give what they think much thought or consideration. People don't know how to brainstorm. People don't know how to critically think about things, which doesn't mean think critically as in be critical of everything and everything is bad, but critical in the fact of in being important, being deep and layered and full of thought, thoughtful. People just don't do that anymore. So these are wonderful books for those kinds of self-development. I won't say self-improvement because there's nothing wrong with you, but you can always develop more broadly, deeply. And these are wonderful books for it. This one I bought for myself for my birthday this year and decided not, I got it a few, like two weeks before my birthday and decided I would start it on my birthday. Now, a lot of people would look at a five-year question a day journal and think because I love this one too very simple but I love it a lot of people would think that because it starts on January 1 that's where you have to start the book so you buy the book in June and don't touch it till January that's just silly so I started on my birthday in the mid at the end of June and have been doing it every day since this is very simple Two lines. That's it. That's all you get. You put in which year it is and you answer the question. What is your number one New Year's resolution? Now this is simple. Number one. Not all of them. What is your most important, the top of the list, number one New Year's resolution for 2024? And then then you, you answer it in two lines and you close the book until tomorrow. And then tomorrow... It asks you on January 2nd, what do you want to be different about this year? What do you want to be different about this year than last year or all the previous years or something? You put in the year and you do. And you, they do it every, every day for five years. There is a junk journaler who did this in a Hobonichi. Hobonichi has or had a five-year very similar project uh, excuse me, a very similar journal. And I was fascinated by that. And I went to find the Hobonichi and I don't know if they don't have them anymore or I just wasn't looking in the right places. I found a different one called Q and A on Amazon. And it was very similar, a five year question a day journal for, for five years. And I read the reviews because I always read the reviews on Amazon. And a lot of them said, it came apart. The book came apart when they were working on it. It's a hard cover and it's tiny. It's just a little guy. So you'd have even less space than the two lines that are here. And that, that bothered me. So I did not get that one. But when I was at Meyer one day, something said, go back to the books, go back to where the journals are. And I did. And this one was there. I lo it's by Piccadilly. I love their books. I was so happy to get it, so I bought it for myself for my birthday. Now, any of these books, let's go back to this one, A Journey Within. You can use this book the same exact way, except you'll get yourself a composition book, 
Harmony, if you're watching, this paper is from one of the Somerset Studio books you sent me. I love, love, love it. All the colors of the lake. It is lake season. I love it. And I wanted to do something just like this, but I thought, why reinvent the wheel? I just tore the paper out and glued it on. I have to do my inside cover because, of course, there was only one beautiful sheet. But I have uh, jelly printed papers for my lake journal that I'll probably dip into for this. But to, to use any of these books in a five-year fashion, which I think would be fascinating, is you just get a journal, excuse me, a composition book, and you write your answers in here every day for a year. I don't know if there's 365 questions in here, but you can, you know, certainly answer them all. And then, of course, date each of it. You can also, I would do it year by year, one composition book for each year, and then do it for five years. Although it's a little bit more difficult to compare the answers, because that's the whole point of this one, is what was the last rumor spread about you? Year to year, it's going to maybe be different, right? And having them all in this one space would certainly make it easier to compare. So you could do a similar setup in your comp book. You can just put the date or the question, excuse me, the question and then on each page, five years, 20, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29. And, and there, so it'd be easier to compare your list and then you would just have one book for one book. It's certainly an option. These have longer answers, but if you're intimidated by all that blank space, which I hate to make fun, but that's silly. Just let your brain go. And if you let it go, it will easily fill the page. But if you're intimidated by that, start a five-year one and just do one question per page and do it every day for five years. And then you could easily compare your answers. And again, you could do that with any of these books. That way you don't have to buy a new one every year. If you really, really enjoyed it, like this one, and you don't have to buy another book. I can do it in the book 2024, and when I want to do it again, then I'll just get a comp book and answer them all again. Or maybe there'll be another one out with new questions. I don't know. But I really like the idea of comparing your answers, looking back and seeing where were you when, like what feels good it feels good when 2024 versus 2029 might be so different because who knows what's coming, right? That's the beauty of these things. I just think they're so, so much fun. And I want to insert here before I forget that every single one of these books, whether you buy one or all, can be used as obviously Number one, writing prompts. If you want to write more, if you want to be a writer, you have to write. And most people say, I don't have any ideas. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. Get one of these and just write. Just let your hand do some work. Your brain and hand coordination. When you hand write, you tap an entirely different part of your brain than when you're keying on the keyboard. Entirely different part. There's a certain and clear disconnect from handwriting, either in a journal or a book, versus writing via keyboard. It's far more personal somehow, some way, because again, you're tapping an entirely different part of your brain when you write things down this way versus on a keyboard. There's a disconnect somehow. Doing it this way feels more formal. If you're young enough, it feels like you're still in college or in high school because you had to write papers for that. Or it feels like work, i.e. J-O-B type of work. Versus here, this is just between you and your brain and your mind and your heart and your soul. This is very different writing than writing on a keyboard. Even though you're answering the same exact question, the answers will be different. It's fascinating. Follow your curiosity. Do some Googling about the difference in outcome, handwriting versus keyboarding. It's a wonderful rabbit hole.
great fun. But you can use these for writing prompts, as I just said, or you can use them for junk journal prompts. You can, if you're looking for a different theme for a glue book, pick something out of here. Would humans be able to handle finding out that more intelligent beings exist in our universe? There's a ton of different ideas in there. You could do a space-themed journal. You could do an, a galaxy-slash-universe science-type journal with the glorious pictures that are coming in from the web cameras now. They're, they're just phenomenal photographs. You can do something celestial. You can do something about aliens. If you're a fan, you can do an X-Files or, or Encounters of the Third Kind journal. Like This is so filled with ideas. And that's just one. We, I just came up with, what, 10 different ideas from one prompt for junk journals or glue books or themes for projects or for writing. You know, maybe you don't want to answer this question about how you feel about it, but if you're looking to write fiction, write a quick, short, crappy story, crappy story. Make it as crappy as you can about how we handle finding out more intelligent beings exist in our universe. Would we handle it well? Would we handle it poorly? Would we try to learn from them or would we try to destroy them? There's a million different routes that can take. Let your imagination go wild. All of this exercise, all of these thoughts, all of these questions, the writing, the, the prompts, the answers, and will all feed your creativity and build that creativity muscle. People ask me all the time, how do you have so many ideas? Where do you get your ideas from? How do you think about all these things? I would have never thought of that. How can you come up with them 10, 15 ideas in two seconds? Because I practice it. I have practiced it every day for years and years and years. And so I'm really good at it. It's the only difference is someone who puts time and energy and practice into something versus someone who's just starting out at it or someone who's never put time, practice, and effort into something. And then they wonder why they're not good at it. It's, it's common sense. It's very simple. But all of these books can be used for junk journaling themes, glue book themes, altered book themes, writing themes, fiction and nonfiction. Back to this one. I have shown this before. As I said, my mom got me this twice for Christmas. One year for Christmas and then the next year for Christmas. And she said she got it for me because she wants to get to know me better. And it's the story of my life. If a story is in you, it has to come out. Everyone has a story. At least one. Most of us have hundreds of thousands of stories. We just don't have faith in our ability to tell them or the interest of people to hear them. And then she got it for me again the next year for Christmas. So I, and I hadn't done, I hadn't really done much with it. I think I did maybe four or five pages in it and it just got put on the shelf because I was doing my regular journaling in the morning and well, I decided I wanted to do these books every day. I wanted to not just have them on the shelf looking pretty. I want to make good use of them. So I, I started doing them every single day. And this one, this one is broken up into childhood and family, young adult and firsts, and adulthood. And I'll read a couple questions. At what age did you move out of your parents' house and where did you go? Describe your first apartment. So some of these, especially these in the beginning, um, these are from early childhood. I'm, I'm putting it K through 12, birth through 12th grade. And then early adulthood for me will be college, maybe high school and college, because some of the questions I've, I've peeked ahead and some of the questions are about firsts. And many of those for me were in high school or earlier. I was a, an early bloomer in a lot of areas. And so the young adulthood might be a mixed bag and then adulthood. So let's see, what was your favorite thing to do in the winter? Tell a specific story about that. So my first thought is... I. My first, and that's usually the best with stuff like this to go with your first instinct. But I used to have this tiny little kid sized shovel. It was red and it had snowmen on it and it was square and it was just my size. I would go out in the winter and help my grandpa shovel snow from their quadruple size, super long <laughs> driveway. So I will probably write that and then write a story about grandpa and me shoveling snow. 
my most memorable birthday. So again, this is early childhood, so it can't be the most memorable birthday. It is my most memorable birthday until I was a young adult because there might be birthday questions in the back. Again, there are no rules, so you can put in your first one, but I like to follow what, to a point, I like to follow what's happening. This is early childhood, so my most memorable birthday, and it's been kind of fun. I've done um, quite a few of the pages. Uh, it's been kind of fun. There's also a this early timeline, a whole timeline, one to five years old, uh, six to 10 years old, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, on and on and on, and then old age. So you can continue in, in past your, you know, I'm right now in between 15, 56 and 60. Anyway, it's been, it's been great fun to do this. Uh, again, this could launch fiction stories. The first time I intentionally lied and just come up with a fictional story about someone who lies intentionally write about where you write about where you went in and around your home or neighborhood to be alone what did you choose why did you choose that spot and what did you do there now another way that you can use these books is if you're wanting to paint and draw more, you could draw pictures that come to mind. Um, going back to the shoveling snow, I might try to conjure up in my memory that's going back quite a ways, that snow shovel that I had when I was a kid. I might do just a little doodle sketch of it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use these books as jumping off points. Anyway, my mom got me two of these and I was at Meyer returning the second one and I thought, It'd be fun if she did it too. Uh, she just turned 80. And so for her to go back to her early childhood, her earliest memories and whatnot, uh, maybe more of a stretch for her. I don't know. And doing the early childhood part might be a little more difficult for her. I don't, I don't know. We both have pretty good memories. So we'll see. But I called her from Meyer and I said, I'm, I'm going to take this. I'm thinking I'm going to take this book back, but. How about you do it? We'll do it together. I've been trying to do mom and me craft days and try and get her to bring this book over and we'll fill them out together and then share our stories. She wants to read mine, but of course people have a really hard time reading my handwriting. And unfortunately, I'm not going to type it, so she's going to have to learn to read my handwriting. Or I can tell her the stories or whatever. I can read them to her. But it's a nice way to get to know somebody. So if you have a best friend or a sister or your mom or your grandma, there's lots of books like Mom Remembers or Grandmother Remembers. There's lots of those kinds of books out or dads. But this is a real generic, simple one. And it's you available all over the place. Give Get one for yourself and give one to your mom, your dad, your sister, your kid, to someone that you want to get to know better and do them together because quite often people just won't do it on their own. Very few people, every, a lot of people buy them and then just leave them there looking pretty on the shelf. I'm guilty of that just like anybody else, although I do eventually take them down and use them. Just a brief intermission here for a moment for a public service announcement. Some of you may or may not have noticed that my friend at Doki Doki Forest, Amy, has been taking a little bit of time off. And I just keep thinking she's so close to her thousand subscriber mark that I'd hate to see those numbers slip off. So if you have a little bit of extra time and you've been hankering for an Amy at Doki Doki Forest video, go over to her channel and watch some things that you may have missed. She's got lots and lots of videos over there. Or re-watch some of your favorites. Continue to comment on them and share them. Post them to your Pinterest page. Share them to your Facebook or Instagram feed. All of those things will help any YouTube subscriber. I know YouTubing is not 
always easy. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. People get burnt out. Um, that is not to say that's what's happening with Amy, but any YouTuber that you watch regularly that you notice has been taking some time off, a huge favor that you can do for them is go find their channel and spend some time there even while they're gone. And that helps keep their algorithm healthy. That helps keep the views up, which helps the algorithm. It's all intertwined. And so not just for Amy at Doki Doki Forest, but any any YouTuber that you miss or that you really, really like, most of us have hundreds of videos on our channels that um, you may have already, you, you may have missed because you're a new subscriber. I have 300 plus videos. Uh, so if you've only recently subscribed in the last month or so, you've got an entire library at your beck and call ready to be explored. So please, after, after you finish this video, <laughs> jump over to Amy at Doki Doki Forest and spend some time on her channel. I will link a few of my very favorite DDF videos in the description box below. Thank you. Back to our regularly scheduled program. The last one is bigger. All these other ones are the same size and you can see that this, this new one is quite a bit bigger. I measured it last night. It's about nine by seven and a half. And it's called My Life in Sketches. This one does have 365 sketch prompts to reflect everything about your life every day. Now, I had just gotten myself this a couple days earlier. I was at Walmart and they had this and I had never seen it before. Oh my, something new. And again, I thought, you don't need another book. You have plenty of sketchbooks you're not using. You have plenty of Piccadilly books that you are working in, but you know, really, do you need another one? Yes, yes, I do. Obviously I did. <laughs> And I love how this looks. It's shimmery gold with the galaxy looking stuff in each of the pen, pencils and blues and teals. And I, I just, it's magical to me. I love it. The inside cover is just plain, but you know, you gotta love a nice black paper. Now start sketching your life fun. This has been out since 2022. Sort of like the create this book one, two, and three or wreck this journal. It's, it's along that line, but this is just sketches. And so I, I'll show you my first couple. I, I started it on June 1st. I believe that was a Monday and I just, I started a lot on June 1st. No, June 1st this year was a Saturday. Looky there. Uh, whatever. I started a lot of things on June 1st for some reason. So my first sketch, uh, day one, and if you remember, I, I've said in a couple videos recently that I'm wanting to improve my drawing skills. I want to learn how to draw dogs really well. So I've started a sketching dogs sketchbook, drawing dogs and sketching dogs. Learning to draw better overall will help me draw dogs better too. So this one was your breakfast today. And up at the top here, I wrote from memory 10 and a half hours later. I remembered what I made for breakfast and I just drew it from memory. I didn't look at my breakfast and draw it. This is what I drew. So I had mozzarella, farm fresh eggs, fresh baby spinach, and butter. And I fried it in layers. I melted the butter I put down some cheese so it'd get nice and crispy. Nope. First, here you're gonna get a nice little cooking recipe. I took the baby spinach and a little bit of salt in butter and I fried that up so it got a little bit cooked. Then I layered cheese, mozzarella cheese, on top of that here and there and got that a little bit crispy. And when that was cooked, on top of that, I put two farm fresh eggs and I learned how to cook eggs on the radio. This particular way to cook eggs. It's called, they called it fry poaching <laughs> because essentially that's all it is. You're frying it in a frying pan with a little bit of oil or I use baking grease or butter. You're frying it and then you put a little bit of water on the side and then cover it and that steams the top so you don't have to flip it, which 
often ends up in breakage of the yolk. But you watch it and the, the yolks turn like a pinkish hue and all of the stuff cooks on top. So they're dunkers with no snot. I love it. I've never ever cooked eggs another way again unless I scramble them or make an omelet. But I've never fried eggs the old fashioned way where you fry, fry, fry and then flip them. This is the only way to go. And somehow the egg yolks get just buttery and custardy and oh they're so good it's wonderful so if you want to try it easy easy but anyway here's the little spinach peeking out from underneath my fried eggs and this dark stuff on the edge is the dark crispy cheese that i let brown and then of course my fry poached eggs and it was fabulous and i love it the next day your favorite part now again, there are no rules and you have to do what works for you. I don't go to the park, I don't. So I don't have a favorite park. I never have had a favorite park. So I looked up park, the dictionary definition for actually the thesaurus to find another word for park. Of course there was park, there was estate, there was playground, recreation area. I picked playground. And here's a picture of a brain, and this is imagination, creative thought, and it just took over this page. And I put in the playground of the mind is my favorite playground. That's what Positively Creative You is all about, is learning to splash around in the sea of your own creativity and learning how to enjoy and clean up the playground of your mind. I did that all in graphite, just in pencil. And you'll notice I also write in here, even though it's a sketches journal, I'm a writer. And if I feel like writing in stuff, I wrote in, I wrote in another answer, what is your favorite park? I put in park in the driveway at home, meaning my car is in park and I'm at home not having to deal with out there. I sound agoraphobic. I'm really not afraid of it. I just don't like it. And I wrote down definition, noun, land area, reserved for pleasure and recreation. Ideas come from every direction, all day, every day, and all night. I hardly ever sleep. Write them down, capture them as they come. Notes to myself. Anyway, there's music, and a lot of times I feel like my mind is on fire and it's burning out of control sometimes because the ideas just come like firecrackers and they're here and they're there and they're, they, they swirl around and there's arrows and, and, and there's music and there's bubbles. And I just had a lot, a lot of fun with this in pencil. Well, then a couple days later, I just, this was, this was the prompt. Something colorful in your life that you enjoy looking at. So I did one of my watercolor palettes and I liked that so much. I thought this needs to be more colorful because your mind's not just black and white. You know, there's every color of the spectrum. And so I went back, this I did on June 2nd. I probably went back three, four days later with my little colored markers and had some fun with color. So just because it's done and I know that I've gone back and shaded better and improved this. Every time I do something, I get a little bit better. And so I come back to it and I kind of feel like that's cheating. I kind of feel like you want to see a difference between your first sketch and your 365th sketch. You want to see improvement across the board. But if I keep going back and making this better, then I won't be able to see my progress so I've kind of stopped doing that. Coffee time. This was a cool clock I, I found on Google. I was looking for a picture of something cool and this is a coffee mug on a saucer clock and I just loved it. So something you're looking forward to this weekend. Uh, so you'll see that there's there's colors now here and there throughout some pen and ink work. I found out the hard way one of my markers is not in fact waterproof <laughs> these maybe i knew it i just forgot pilot razors that i got for christmas pilot razor point uh, are not water resistant waterproof in any way um, and so it, when i colored this purple and red it bled the black from the other page now i know these pages hold up pretty well for you know just 
kind of junky pages, this watercolor did not bleed through. This guy did not bleed through. Um, this is says something from your last vacation. And um, I had to think and think and think. And then I went, vacation? What vacation? I don't remember the last vacation I had. I know I went somewhere sunny. I'm pretty sure it was Florida. And so here's the ocean. There was sand involved in water. You know, there's always sand and water involved in my vacation. So I had, I looked up a fun, I did not come up with this out of my mind. I looked on Google vacation word art and this was on there and I copied it essentially. A hobby that you've had not much time for lately. I really haven't been doing much watercolor lately. I've got a lot of house projects that need doing. I'm working on, I started a new book. I'm trying to get Crime is Common, my true crime channel off the ground. I've got a lot going on. So I haven't been painting nearly as much as I'd like. And this is the last one I'll show you. It's my favorite so far. I really like all of them. Um, but this is says, day 14 is a place you've been going lately when you need a quiet retreat. And it's this book. I come back here and I sketch. And so, you know, you can take it literally like, oh, I go to my reading nook or, oh, I go to the lake or, oh, I go to my mom's or whatever. A you, can, you can take it literally as a place or stretch your imagination a little bit. I'm home all the time. I'm always in my book nook. I'm always in my studio. I'm, I'm always in those places. But where have I gone lately to get a quiet retreat? I come to this book. And so I just copied the cover and I love it. I used my gold pen and my watercolor, uh, excuse me, my tiny, tiny little markers to get that effect. And I just love it. And I'm having just a ball. I'm surprised how well the paper's holding up with the watercolor. I don't use a lot of water on it, but you can tell it's buckled and whatnot because it's not made for watercolor, but I'm loving it anyway. So again, you can use this book. You can use this book as a junk journal jumping off point, a hobby that you have not had much time for lately. You might not be able to watercolor like you like, but you could start a watercolor glue book or you could start a watercolor slash art themed junk journal or altered book. You could write about watercolor because you can take that, you know, take a little notebook with wherever you go, a little, a little book like this and jot notes about watercolor, make ideas. You could list videos. I've started playlists about when I do have time for watercolor. These are the things I want to come back to. I love you making YouTube playlists for myself so that when I do have time, I don't have to take the time to look something up. I've got a ready-made, ready-to-go list of all kinds of yummy things that I can do when I'm ready to watercolor. Lots and lots and lots of information here today. An idea overload, but welcome to my world. This is what it's like here all day, every day. I hope you find some inspiration here. I hope you enjoy my Piccadilly book collection. I hope you, if you have one, get it off the shelf and start playing in it. It's wonderful fun. It can take five seconds to answer a question or it can take a half hour with a cup of coffee if you'd like. It's entirely up to you. There are no rules. Use them. Squeeze every bit of, you, of use out of them as you can by being creative with how you use them. Not only answer the questions as posed, but maybe use the quotes as something to inspire your day or set your intention for the day or draw a picture or start a new painting or a new junk journal or whatever. Use it to beef up your creativity muscles. There's all kinds of ways that you can use these books for your creative benefit. Obviously, I can go on and on and on about these things. I hope that you've stayed along with me till the end. If you have, brava, congratulations. Now go, find your book, go go to Amazon and get one. When you go to Meyer or Walmart next, grab one or whatever store you shop at, check their journal section. They're not in the books section at Walmart or Meyer. They are in the office supply section. In Meyer, they're with the calendars, the planners, the notebooks, 
and in Walmart, they're with the notebooks, journals, and planners as well in the office supply section. Whew. Go love up your beastlies. Make sure that you have patience with them, especially if they're aging. They're doing the best they can. My take at the lake, out for now.